So as Dylan's introduced very wonderfully this morning, we're thinking about praising God. I don't know how good you are or how good you consider yourself to be at praise. It is a vital part of our Christian life. It is something that we uh, should be doing every day as part of our time of prayer and of speaking to God. Uh, But I think it's often a part that we skip and we often just go to the things that we need from God, the things that are on our hearts that are worrying us and troubling us, and we go straight there. And I want to consider this morning why praise is important and why we should do it as part of our daily routine as Christians and as part of our prayer time. So what does praise mean? Do you know what it actually means to praise God? I thought I'd go back to basics and have a look in the dictionary for the dictionary definition. And it said this, it says, to express one's respect and gratitude in an act of worship. To express one's respect and gratitude in an act of worship. That's what praise is. So I was thinking, um, how do I praise God? How do we as people praise God? And um, I, I wondered if there is a particular place or a particular time in your life when, that you can go back to when you felt really close to God and that you felt like you were in a true attitude of praising him, of awe and uh, um, uh, worshipping him with that attitude of respect. And as I was thinking, um, I was taken back to a beach. I've got a photograph here. Uh, taken from the beach. This was, uh, I went with the Salvation Army um, to do a mission in Tanzania. I've spoken about this before. And um, we were there for three months and they gave us the weekend off. Weren't they kind? (laughs) We got a weekend off and uh, we went to the island off the coast of of, uh, Tanzania called Zanzibar. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. And this is a beach. This is taken from the beach in Zanzibar. Uh, We decided... I don't know why we got the weekend off, but we decided it would be a good idea to get up early before the sun rose to meet on the beach and to watch the sun coming up. And uh, although it's 20 years ago, I remember how I felt, where I was sitting, how in awe of God I was at that moment, seeing the sun coming up on that beach. We had arrived the night before in the dark, so we didn't know, I didn't know what the beach looked like. Uh, I had no idea, and we made our way down to the beach, and um, the sun started to rise, and I was looking out to sea, looking in the direction of this photo for a good half an hour until the sun was fully up, praising and um, in total awe of God and his creation, and then all of a sudden realised that there was actually a whole beach around me, and uh, this was the view from where I was sitting. For me, that is the time, that is the place where I truly praised and worshipped God. And I wanted to ask this morning, have you got a place or a time like that? In our scripture today, it was written by one of the best, if not the best person in all of history at worshipping and praising God. It was the shepherd and king David. And he is instructing his people, the nation of Israel, he's telling them to praise God. And uh, in just a few short verses, this is what he says. He says, sing to the Lord. Even if your voices are not amazing, we should still sing to God. I believe it gets uh, translated on the way up and uh, arrives at God's ears in a beautiful melody. Sing to the Lord. Give praise to the Lord. Declare his glory. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Worship the Lord, ascribe to the Lord glory. Praise to the Lord, give thanks to the Lord. It's hard to miss the point, isn't it? We are called to be people of praise. And we didn't struggle earlier, did we, to think of things as Dylan asked you to call out your praises. I'm sure none of you struggle to come up with things to praise God for. We have so much to praise him for. So let's just start with a little context as we look at Chronicles. It was a book that was written about the Israelites, the Jews, God's people. 
and um, it was written just after they had been in captivity. It's a summary of their history. It emphasises the building of the temple, that great um, and auspicious occasion for the people. And its aim is to bring the nation back together into their spiritual heritage and their faith. They had been in captivity, they had been dispersed, and they are trying to bring them back together, bring them into their place of faith and into praising and worshipping God again. And right in the middle, the very middle of this book, is this psalm of praise. And it's actually stolen from the, star, from the psalms. It's a compilation of Psalm 96, 105, and 106. The chronicler brings it together, this psalm, right in the middle of the book to remind the Israelites of all that God has done for them and to emphasize the importance of praising God. If the Israelite nation needed reminding and being told that it is important to praise God, then we need that reminder. And we need telling today that it is important to praise God. I need that reminder. It's important. So as I was studying and looking at this uh, scripture, I read in my life application Bible, you know the Bible with the little notes at the bottom, it's very handy especially uh, when you don't want to study too deep and you just want a little bit of background. At the bottom there in the notes, it says um, that there was two elements of true praise found in this psalm. And we're going to look at them together this morning. The first element of praise is to remind ourselves who God is and what he has done. That's why praise is important, to remind ourselves who God is and what he has done. And the second element of praise is to tell other people about it. So that story right at the beginning of the meeting of the lady that was standing on her doorstep praising God was doing just that, wasn't she? She was telling others, she was sharing. So let's have a look. This first element of praise. Remind yourself who God is and what he has done for you. King David in the scripture that uh, we were, we're looking at today, he says in verse 23, let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Verse 26, the Lord made the heavens. Verse 28, recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Verse 34, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithfulness endures forever. So as I was thinking about praise and how we should praise and why we should praise, I was drawn to this book, Too Busy Not to Pray. It's one of my favourites and um, has taught me so many things. Written uh, by a man called Bill Hybels. And um, he writes a section, because it's talking about prayer, he writes a section on praise. And I want to share with you just um, an excerpt from this book where he explains why it is so important for us to praise. Bill says this, in my opinion, it is essential to begin times of prayer in praise. It is essential to begin times of prayer in praise. Let me give you four reasons why. First, praise sets the tone for the entire prayer. It reminds us who we are addressing, whose presence we have entered and whose attention we have gained. Just, I want you to stop and think about that for a second. When you enter into prayer and you praise God, it reminds you who you are addressing, the God of the universe. It reminds us as we praise whose presence we have entered. And it reminds us whose attention we have gained. One of the best ways that I know for establishing this type of tone is to choose a psalm of praise and to read or say it back to God. Next, praise reminds us of God's identity and inclination. And as we list his attributes, lifting up his character and personality, we reinforce our understanding of who God is. So as we praise God and as we say, God, you are faithful, righteous, just, merciful, gracious, willing to provide, attentive and unchanging. 
When the spirit of adoration takes over and we begin pondering God's attributes, we soon say from our heart, I am praying to a tremendous God, which only motivates us to keep on praying. When we come to God in the attitude of prayer and praise, when we realize who he is and what he is capable of, then it makes our prayers so much easier, doesn't it? We're not praying in doubt and wondering whether he will hear us or answer us because we know who God is. Thirdly, praise purifies the one who is praying. When we have spent a few minutes praising God for who he is, our spirit is softened and our agenda changes. Those burning issues we're dying to bring to God's attention may seem less critical. Our sense of desperation subsides as we focus on God's greatness and we can truly say, I am enjoying you, God. It is well with my soul. Praise quietens and softens our hearts. And finally, adoration is a worthwhile place to start because God is worthy of it. God is worthy of our praise. It should be hard to get past the Our Father in our prayer without sinking in awe at that incredible miracle. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, says 1 John 3 verse 1. A God who is omnipotent, omniscient and omnipresent, and yet who loves us, watches over us and gives us good gifts. This is an amazing God. Our Heavenly Father is worthy of our praise. So we remind ourselves, that first point, we remind ourselves who God is and what he has done for us when we praise him. And secondly, tell others about who God is and what he has done for them. And we go back to the scripture, verse 23 and 24 says this, sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day. Proclaim it, share it, don't keep it to yourself. Proclaim it. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all people. One of my favourite daily devotional books is a book called Solo. And... um, It goes through the whole of scripture and of the passage that we're looking at today, it says this. If you could shout this psalm from anywhere in the world, where would it be? Well, for me, it would be that beach, but where would your place be? It might be a specific mountain top or a certain waterfall or even to an international group. Picture yourself saying these words from your heart in that setting without embarrassment or reservation. For me, as a fairly shy and quiet person, I know Dylan wouldn't believe it, that's quite a daunting task, and I'm sure for many of you that would be too, yet we have so much to shout about. You were shouting out this morning your praise. We have so much to shout about. And um, so I just wanted to consider briefly what it is that we have to shout about to other people in order to proclaim God's praise. And uh, I've come up with three things. The first one is we can declare how awesome God is. He is an awesome creator. And the more that science discovers, the more that scientists uh, build up their knowledge of our world, of the human body, of animals, and how the universe works, the more amazingly intricate and mind-blowingly brilliant it becomes, uh, the more information. And this is an example by a doctor called Jeremy Bergman, um, an example from the human body. Just imagine as I read to you, um, and praise God for this. Chemically, the body is unequaled for complexity. Each one of its 30 trillion cells is a mini chemical factory which performs about 10,000 chemical functions. Every cell has one trillion bits of data, equal to every letter in 10 million books, every cell in your body. Each one also replaces itself every seven years. Each one is independent, 
yet cooperates with many millions of other cells. Even though there are over four billion people alive today, each body is exorbitantly expensive and about 50 billion humans have been born since Adam. If it's chemical elements, that's your body's chemical elements, were bought on the open market, a medium-sized human body would cost at least £4.5 million. And that's just one small example of God's creation. Isn't that something to praise God about? Isn't that something to shout about? Second thing that we have to shout about is our salvation through Jesus Christ. Scripture talks about this. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9, He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. Psalm 62 verse 1, Truly my soul finds rest in God, my salvation comes from him. John 3.16, which you will all know well, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not die but have eternal life. God's salvation is something to praise God about. Amen? Amen. God's salvation for others is something to shout about. Let's get excited. And finally, why praise? Because our God performs great deeds. We read in the Bible, don't we? Moses parting the water, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego entering the furnace and not getting burnt. The walls of Jericho coming crashing down. Elijah in the valley of dry bones. Jesus walking on water. Jesus feeding the 5,000, healing the sick, raising the dead. We hear of miracles of healing and restoration today in Christian books, from testimonies of other people on the TV and the radio. I have my own stories of miracles that I'm more than willing to share. God performs great deeds. It is something to shout about and something to praise him for. So in conclusion, we need to be reminded We need to remind ourselves daily, I would hasten to add, of who God is and what he has done for us. If you have a place like my beach in Zanzibar, then I encourage you to go back to it. I'd love to go back. Not physically, but in your mind, to go back regularly to that place. Not just a physical place, but to that place of worship and that place of awe and that place of praise because of who God is and what he has done and do it regularly I hope you can understand from just these few moments together thinking and considering how much it's worth it how much better our prayers become and how much more effective they are when we realize we're praying to a God who hears and answers and is capable of doing whatever we ask of him according to his will We also need to tell others. We cannot and we should not keep it to ourselves. We need to speak out to the nations, as it says in the scripture. We need to get excited about who God is. Can I see some smiles on your face with the excitement of who God is and what he has done? Some of us need to rekindle that passion and maybe do it each day. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill us with that joy of his presence a passion that was very clearly seen in David and in his psalm. What can we do or what do we need to do to rekindle that passion daily so that we can share it with others? May we be so full of the Holy Spirit and of praise for all the Lord has done to us that we can do nothing other than express it to God and everyone that we meet. May you be so full of the Holy Spirit and of praise for the Lord and what he has done for you today that you can do none other than express it to God 
and to the people that you meet this week. I've picked a new song to respond to this morning. The first time I heard this song and saw the pictures that are going to join it on the screen, it overwhelmed me with praise. And, and I pray that it has that effect on you today. It's called um, 10 Billion Reasons. 10 Billion Reasons Why We Should Praise God. And uh, it's truly beautiful. You can listen along, you can watch the, the screen as it shows you the creation and things that God has done for us. Or you can close your eyes and spend those moments. Maybe you need a time of repentance to say sorry for the times when we've ignored God's goodness and shied away from sharing that with other people. And then to ask him for courage, courage to share his amazing deeds with everyone that we meet. Like the lady on the, the porch shouting, praise God, praise God. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath. The planets form, and if the stars were made to worship, so light, I can see your heart in it. Every burning star signal fire grace And if creation sings your praises so alive
fortune and chase down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On the hill you created, the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. We well, lost your life. So I can find it here And if you left the grave behind you So I I can see your heart And everything you've done Every part designed in a work of art Called love and if you claim Good.